Hi, I'm Angie and I want to um, experiment a little bit today with a new chocolate bar design. So I have um, two kinds of chocolate. I have made a strawberry chocolate, more like a dark chocolate, and I have my matcha chocolate. And I wanna um, like bring them all in one bar and swirl them together. I hope this makes sense. If not, you will see later on what I mean with that. Um, and I already see one big difficulty that will probably ar arise later today. Um, I have two different kinds of chocolate, right? Which also means that I have to temper two different kinds of chocolate and I don't have a tempering machine. So I'm wondering if I'll be able uh, to make that work. To have the same temperature at the same time for both chocolate. Well, we'll see. So I'm going to use, um, like I've already mentioned, a strawberry and a matcha chocolate. And I think um, if you at home would use a dark chocolate and a white chocolate, this would give a really, really nice contrast. So um, yeah, I think that would be a good option for you. And of course, I also want to use some colors, but I already have like a, a brownish red color from the strawberry chocolate and a green from the matcha chocolate. And I really wanna make sure that you can see both parts of the chocolate. So what I thought um, is uh, creating a line from one corner to the other and um, yeah, just introduce some color there. I don't wanna overdo it because usually I'm going in like full in with my colors, um, but I wanna keep it a little bit um, lighter on the colors, let's say that. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes and I think um, let's just do it. Here we go. I want to show you uh, what kind of equipment I want to use today. So this is the mold I want to use. I have two brushes and here are the colors I'm going to use. So those two are from Chef Rubber and those two I made from scratch, a green and a gold. And then I will also use this tape. So here's what we're going to do. I want to create a diagonal from uh, this corner to this corner, um, like with the different colors, kind of an ombre effect. Um, and two, I want to do freestyle and two, I want to uh, use the tape and try to be, well, just a little bit more neat. Um, because if we do the freestyle, you see that the bar molds, they are not, it's not a plain surface, right? So I think it will, everything will like bleed a little bit and so it will not be neat at all. Um, but let's just see how it looks. Maybe it has a really nice effect um, and that's why I also want to use the tape just to make sure um, yeah, that we're also trying a neater version. Okay, I would say we also start with the tape. Okay, I really want a finer line. I'm just not sure. How this is going to work, but maybe like this. Um, I'm using a cloth to press the tape on because I really don't want that the color is bleeding under the tape. So I really press it firmly on. So that's this side. Try this. All right, so those are the first two I wanted to tape. So I guess now we can go right into our colors. Okay, I'm starting with the purple. And I might need to get twice over the purple because you see it's a little bit translucent and I don't like that. And the other two, like that's the freestyle. Now I'm going in with the peach luster. Now I'm using the gold 
and I feel like I need another color. We'll see. So I think it's not enough. Maybe another green. I will need at least one more color. Let me think which color would fit best to this um, yeah, color pattern and then I'm back in a second. Okay, here we go. So I want to use this one next. Um, it's from Chef Rubber. You can't see uh, the label anymore because I was heating it up um, in a water bath. And I think it's called Moonlight Blue or something. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to use. And then I also have this blue that I made from scratch. So, but first I want to go in with this one here. And my thought process was, we're starting out here with a strong color and I want to end with a strong color. If you're working with tape like this, actually you want to make sure that you um, remove it while your um, color is still a little bit liquid. Um, but yeah, it still works because you don't want to you know like have it stuck on there with the color and you rip off the dried color huh no I said um, I'm using the tape because I want to have like a neat finish but it's still the color still bleeded under it I'll show you yeah like this is not neat So I'm not sure if it even makes sense to tape it, but we will see in the end result. Yeah, it's really hard to use tape when your surface isn't like completely plain or flat. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working with. So let's move on to the chocolate. All right, here we are. I do not like piping anything, but in this case, I just don't know um, a better way. So here I have my strawberry chocolate that I've talked about. You can use dark chocolate, would be great. Here I have my matcha chocolate. I think um, a white chocolate or a milk chocolate would be fun. I mean, if you have a white chocolate, um, you just get a little bit more contrast. Um, so I guess here we go. I will start out here with the strawberry. It is pretty thick, I can tell you that. Um, but most of my chocolate is um, because I don't use tons of like cocoa butter. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Maybe like this. Okay, let's see how this looks. I'm giving it a tap and now it's time to swirl like do a lot of swirls because you really want to see it on the other side too so I think this could be good and I'm using just a, um, a skewer here like a wooden skewer nothing fancy and really mix it through don't be scared to go in there I give it another really good tap and now this needs to set. Here we are. So I'm already seeing things that I don't like. So the matcha isn't properly tempered. Like it's not too crazy bad or something, but I just can see that it's like here and there I can see some um, yeah untempered spot. Um, yeah, I think it was just really, really tricky to get both um, uh, at the right temperature at the same time and so the matcha was a little bit too warm when I piped it in but well uh, here we are let's let's see so the first thought I I just have is um taping does it really is it really worth like taping it I don't think so those are the two that I've taped so I, I don't know I don't think that this makes any sense with the tape 
show it closer. I don't think this makes any sense, you see that? Okay, we're not taping. Um, let's take a look at the ones that I did um, by hand. And I think they look kind of cool. I knew that I will not have the same swirl um, on the front as in the back and that's also why I really wanted to have a fun pattern here but still see like two of the different kinds of chocolate so I, I like it I think it's cute next time I have to temper my matcha better but everything else I think it looks really cool so I'd say today's experiment went really really well this is something I can build on to um, of course I didn't uh, temper the matcha properly um, but yeah I mean these things happen and next time this will not happen again and I will just be a little bit more um, careful with my timing um, and I would say today's lessons learned is I won't use tape on a bumpy surface anymore so really only when I have a like nice flat mold then I'm going to use it but not when it's like super bumpy like my bar molds and that's that for today. Um, if you're looking for equipment, you can um, check out the description below. I have some links for you there. Um, if you have questions, leave them also down below. Um, or send me a DM on Instagram at chocolatespiel. And have a good one. Bye.